Hey guys, it's MJ. And it's my job to help you become the best version of yourself that you can through evolution and ascension. So, I'm going to quickly read to you the book I wrote. It's a very short read. You can buy it on Amazon for your Kindle. It's an ebook. I made it with love. Also, email me for a personalized tarot card reading because that's my main gig. It's em3dj3 at gmail.com. All right. I'm so excited. Let's dig into this. And I'm going to try and read it super fast and quick for you. It's called Your Soul is the One. Love Thy One, Enlightenment Will Follow by Melinda D. Clevenger. Okay, so your soul is the one. Chapter one, stop being you and be you. Prep work to kickstart a change within you. Always do exactly what you want to do, exactly when you want to do it. All right, all right. I know doing what you actually want to do instead of making the appropriate choice probably sounds pretty wild and crazy, right? How could you ever start down a road to enlightenment and being the best version possible of yourself? which is the real you that you've been losing track of over the years, by the way, by noticing your thoughts and acknowledging what your true desires are. And then when appropriate and not dangerous or harmful to yourself or others, deciding to try that out for a change just to see what happens. If you're anything like I was when I chose to begin analyzing why I was so unhappy and why my life wasn't going the way that I wanted it to on repeat, then this idea would sound completely preposterous. I really wasn't the best person back then, only in my case, when I started to realize this, instead of making better choices, I had trouble accepting that I had any flaws, and I fought it. I said, F it. To my surprise, the experience ended up being a blessing in disguise. That resulted in a lesson that was for my own good. I now call these life events lessons. The circumstances in my life at that time, strange as they were, provided me with several years to basically F off. I did whatever I wanted all of the time. I was selfish. I was rude. I was lazy. I didn't have responsibilities. I was self-entitled and took, took, took and rarely gave any payment or work in return. I felt like I deserved it because I was still living in the world basing my status on who I was, was when I was growing up. Only, I wasn't anything like that person in my daily life anymore. I did not care about myself, and I had lost the people I cared about, and who I thought made me me. Ouch, it hurt. I wasn't even me anymore, if I couldn't have them. Therefore, I just did whatever made the most sense to me, in whichever situation that came up, at any given moment. I gave up on all of the work I had done in the past to become such a great, lovable person, I completely gave up on any kind of future. This is when the strangest thing occurred. Living like this forced me to understand who I really was and why. It showed me what I actually did want and for when, my future. Out of the blue, I began to realize I'd been changing my own personal beliefs and direction throughout the course of my life based on other people's needs. The me inside of me kept changing and was only a version of herself crafted in an image that was pleasing to my loved ones. And now I wanted to be myself again. This little escape from the people in the ego, which had directed who I had thought I was supposed to be in the past, had done me some good. I did a 180 degree perspective flip the moment I had my epiphany. Why hadn't I realized this earlier? Cycle after cycle after cycle of failing and starting over again and dealing with the aftermath and accepting the results again and again. Why had I been too stubborn to see this before now? In the long run, it did me more good than harm. And I knew and could feel the entire time that I was exactly where I needed to be, exactly when I needed to be there. Fortunately, the suffering was worth it because it opened my eyes in order for me to remember who I was before I altered myself in an attempt to get my loved ones to love me more. I wasn't even me. No wonder they, they didn't love me anymore back then. I'm sure they did love me. My own internal conflict had just been getting the best of me. 
is all. Okay, so my advice to you, stop being you and be you again. Step number one, begin to make choices out of your currently held norm. This will help you remember who you used to be in order to set you on a path towards getting back to living your destiny and stop the unknown inner conflict and unnecessary confusion you've been living with since childhood. It will help you get out of your element and realize how much of a lie you've actually been living and it will help you connect back to your own inset morals and values instead of those in place for the sake of the ones you love or hate. Not only has the end of the world as we knew it begun, but it's progressing rapidly. And if you want to quick start your integration into what is happening, then you need to remember who you really are. The you without all of those learned behaviors and opinions unintentionally picked up throughout the course of your life that you accidentally confused as yourself. They were not you. Here is a method that works really well and fast to take you out of your element and force your mind to see who you really are. So you can introduce yourself to you again and shake hands, high five, fist bump, and all that jazz. And finally, get back to working as a team. It's really quite simple. Number one, each and every time you make a decision, think long and hard about why you decide to make the choice you want to make. Example, when you are picking out a out what shirt to wear in the morning. Consider your thoughts during the process. What makes you choose to wear the shirt you want to choose? Is it because you like it? Or is it because you think your spouse will like it? Are you picking a shirt that will help you fit in? Because it's what everybody else wears? Do you want to choose a shirt that will make you look cool or better than someone else? Number two. After analyzing your thoughts, do what you would do, not what you normally do for the sake of other people. Make the choice that suits you best without taking into consideration any other factors whatsoever. Example, pick the shirt that you like the best, the one you would wear if there was nobody else around to alter your reasoning as to why you would make the choice you normally make. Three. And simply go on with your day and see what happens. Take note of your thoughts in reference to your untypical choice. How do you feel personally about choosing what you wanted to choose for once instead of basing your choice on the needs and opinions of the people around you? Example, when people comment about your shirt, how does it make you feel? Are you embarrassed or proud? Let's say somebody makes fun of you. Does it offend you? Do you think if it did offend you that you may have been using a defense mechanism so you could protect your self, AKA you, because you like the shirt and today you chose what you should always choose. Choose to be yourself. You just met you, the one inside that you were sticking up for you are tried and true, and you have always loved and wanted the best for you. And you always will. You are you. Have fun with this exercise and keep trying it out with many different choices. Get goofy with your silly self. <laughs> Simple silly choices will be much more efficient in getting started. And you'll get much quicker results. You can move on to some of the more serious stuff you need to work through and come to terms with a little bit later on in your journey when you are more prepared and strong enough to handle them. <laughs> Once you remember who you were on the day you were born, you are going to feel so much love for yourself and you are going to feel guilty and bad about trying to be someone else instead of that natural version of you the version of you from before you had processed so many options of who, what, when, where you wanted and then decided to be. Once you remember who you were before any brainwashing or manipulation of your thoughts, you are going to want to hightail it 
up to the finish line of evolution as fast as you possibly can. So you can just be you again already. You're going to realize just how badly you have been missing the you inside of you that is your soul for far too long. Be thankful for the love inside of you. Be grateful and always choose what's best for you. You are blessed because you are part of the one. Namaste on that chapter. Chapter two, no lies. Each and every one of us is capable of living the life that we love and have always wanted to live. Do you want to change your life? Then do not lie. It is way more complicated than I ever could have imagined. In fact, when I chose to never lie again, I thought it was going to be simple. But let me tell you from my own personal experience, it took me down a very long and winding road that I did not anticipate. And through many years of working on myself that I did not see coming in advance, it forced me to realize who I am and who I have always been and wanted to be again. And along the way, I noticed in just how many ways I was actually lying to myself that I didn't even know about. Quitting lying is the absolute best thing that has ever happened to me in my life. So hop onto the truth caboose and the world can be a better place for you and me. Just wait, you'll see. Everybody knows the three basic rules to a happy life. They are obvious and simple. Do not lie, do not cheat, do not steal. To or from yourself and or to or from anyone else. Otherwise, karma will bitch slap you around <laughs> until you take the time. You know that time you could have been using on something else to fix it. Clear your karma. And we all want and deserve to be happy. So we all follow these principles at all times, right? Wrong. I don't know if it's because we are lazy or if it's because that's not how we grew up. Maybe we are seeing people who appear to love us, lying, cheating, and stealing to get the things that made them happy and in return us happy or what? I'm not sure how or why we have ever looked up to or felt akin with any person ever who was not working purely for the best interest and well-being of the overall, which is everyone and everything as a collective. But somehow something along the way happened and we started believing that we could get some kind of fulfillment without earning it by doing and are participating with or in the very things that have caused each and every painful feeling that has ever hurt us. And that is against our natural moral code that we understand from our own personal experience. Because bingo, each and every time that we lied to or cheated or cheated ourselves out of something or stole something that did not belong to us or stole in the sense of accepting something that we did not want, need, or deserve, and we were just okay with that. Each of those times throughout our entire life and many other similar occasions, or excuse me, entire life and many other similar occasions that we went against what we knew to be righteous and good to ourselves, how did it make us feel? inside. How did it build us up and make us feel good about ourselves? Because you love yourself, right? If you don't, you should. And the golden rule has been spitting in your face because each time you didn't do what you knew was the right thing to do, you were basically reminding yourself that because of all the bad choices you have made in the past, you are not worth an ounce of shit. You are reinforcing the belief system you have created internally to protect yourself from owning up to or taking any blame for any of the bad choices you have ever made by allowing yourself to admit and belong to or in with subpar conditions. 
that are only acceptable for or two people who ding 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 are not worthy of love and happiness because they cannot even find a way to love the person they think that they are because of the cop-out or even just simple mistakes that they made in the past that make them who they are anyways just because we live in a society where pretty much everyone has allowed this concept to snowball the entire course of their life and just because most people will play this record on repeat forevermore this, this does not mean that you have to remain on that bandwagon and go through your life not loving who you are who you've always been deep down inside before the corruption that is the world around us showed you how to build more bad instead of good and fooled you into thinking that that's who you really are and that's who you've always been because it isn't we all like thinking that we are better than other people for whatever reasons we can find to be entitled to that make us the elitist in any given situation but how or why have we chosen the stupid the always harder in every single way path of living this makes no sense to me because I cannot fathom why any of us have wasted our entire lives on standing still, unable to move, when happiness and success and satisfaction and love and contentment were a minute fraction of the work and just one step away. Like always, it's the easiest stuff that we cannot see right in front of our faces. Probably most of the time. It actually was out of love for others, which is even more fucked up and confusing. But take the first step right now and just for the next hour, don't lie to yourself or anyone else and see what happens. Note, lying includes every single type of misleading or deceit and all excuses we tell ourselves in order to be able to affirm the why for every thought that crosses our mind or comes out of our mouths. So for the next hour, analyze the why for every thought that comes into your mind. Why do you think it? And how do you rationalize the truth behind it? And how did you become to believe it as it is in your mind? You get to hang out with the toddler for the next hour. And every time you think or someone speaks, you get to say, but why, but why? And answer that question to yourself, just like you would answer it to a toddler to help them learn and understand the world around them because you love them and you love it when they're cute and happy instead of upset because they need something and they don't know what it is or how to get it for themselves. So they throw a fit and are whiny until their needs are either met or they give up and internalize that they are not worthy of it or whatever they wanted was not good for them. Hmm. See, everything I have to share on the subject of not lying ended up super harsh and complicated to explain. But don't worry, it gets easier and easier once we play the toddler and answer the question of why and how over and over every time we think or speak. For me, a lot of stuff became obvious right away. Not that I didn't trick myself out of the easy life for another five or six years or anything like that because of defying that the simple couldn't really be that simple and rationalizing with myself that life just couldn't be that easy since it's never been that actually easy for anyone else I've ever known. Nope, I thought that's the simple life, which is the good life, tooth and nail before I began actually living it. Man, I was dumb to waste those years too. <laughs> Change is hard. We overthink it and psych ourselves out until we can convince ourselves that it's not a trick. Take it from me, it's not a trick. The flip side is natural and life is for the living. No time for wasting. Too many great days and moments to enjoy. Chapter three. And this, it's, it gets a little quicker after this. So I had to get through that tough stuff first. Chapter three, never question your intuition. It's always right. Our feelings are so much more than just mere feelings. I am a very spiritual person and I know each feeling I experience is connected to what I have felt before it and what I'm going to feel later on. Not only are feelings continuously interconnected, but they are more like groups of many different feelings felt simultaneously 
individually and together as a whole at the same time for us to read and interpret like a book. Our feelings reach us in the order and degree of intensity in which we need them the most. This way, we can address the most important needs first and take care of the other issues when it's their turn on the list. Homeostasis is much more efficient when our mind, body, and soul all work together. Information is coming at us from every direction, all of the time through an extremely multifaceted and diverse network of communication types, most of which are not viewable per our visual spectrum. Our intuition warns us or gives us approval, telling us which people or things are okay for us and which are not. And sometimes it's a flat out red or green flag, no or yes. Our intuition is the part functioning within us that knows if we, mind plus body plus soul are going to be able to use or even work with certain types of stimuli as a whole. My own personally lived life experiences led me to this belief system and I have been studying the synchronicities in my own system for years. I pay attention to specific details like where I am at when I sense positive or negative vibes, where at my body I am feeling certain types of feelings and which ones are stronger and where. What I am doing and thinking about during moments when I feel specific sensations. What is going on in and around me that my intuition would be sending my body and mine, mind reports on, etc. And then I take note of the similarities and differences and their changes and I remember what I learned for future reference. It's like a neat, complex language. I'm grateful that I was able to crack my own internal communication systems code. I am thankful that I can now include my intuition's input along with my other senses' input to assess my overall well-being and systems needs checklist. I am blessed because now I can take better care of myself, which equals better flow. Mind plus body plus soul. Chapter four, focus on the breath. Just try it. You'll see this concept, although very easy to use, probably seems silly and maybe even like it would be a waste of time to most people. Do not underestimate the power it yields. I cannot tell you just how very much it changed my life. <clears throat> Focusing on my breathing makes my life run smoothly. I'm cool, centered, and super fly. <laughs> yep, the silly yet simple technique skyrocketed my progression and woke me up tremendously. More than anything else I've implemented into my routine. So please don't take the focus on the breath for granted. It was my key towards the freedom I now have from living my ego's desired life. And it's so darn easy, yet so effective. I, I read that like in a strange way, but it means I'm free of the ego. Like I am free the freedom from having to live my ego's desired life. Okay. Whenever you are in a stressful situation, just stop before you react, before you freak out or get mad and pay attention to your breathing. When I began to do this, I realized that there is never a reason to be angry. I would start thinking about how fast I was breathing and then I had to take a moment or two trying to work on calming myself down and slowing my breaths back to normal. And wouldn't you know it, by the time I had my breathing pattern back to its normal rhythm, I had thought over what was happening and considered why all of the parties involved were doing what they were doing and why they were acting the way they were acting and I had a better handle on what was really going on. So just say stop 
and take a couple of deep breaths as you are focusing, relaxing, and keeping your mind, body, and spirit busy. So your subconscious mind will have a chance to work through the problems at hand without the influence of or confusion from the other two systems. This works really great when I'm trying to decompress at the end of the day or when I'm standing in nature and I want to experience its beauty, but there are people around being loud and annoying. <laughs> and after a while, I began using it always. It keeps me calm and focused all day and helps me get a good rhythm and flow going in order to work. Or if I'm walking and even in conversations, when your thinking mind is working with your body to slow down your breathing and relax your mind, your subconscious mind so can pull information in from your body and mind and from the environment and figure everything all out before they start confusing him or it. Your soul is wise. Chapter five, if you just pay attention, busy your hands and your mind on, mind on tasks and let your subconscious mind begin noticing the synchronicities in the world around you. When it's able to start reading the signs, your mind picks up on it too and you will be on, on the path towards your life. The one in which you were meant to live. The life where you can be fulfilled and happy. Only your soul knows what really makes you happy. <clears throat> Without overthinking it like our thinking mind does. The signs are overwhelming. Everywhere and everything around us has meaning. Keep busy and productive and give your soul time to do its job and handle more important stuff like listening to the universe. It'll amaze you how many positive situations start occurring and how many wonderful places you'll be guided to after your soul starts making connections and being given the time it needs to lead you to your purpose. By the way, just in case you didn't realize it yet, your soul is the real you and you need to give yourself more time to work with the universe. One. <laughs> to heal your mind and protect your body so that you can thrive. Chapter six, purge, cleanse, repeat. Once you start letting your soul begin its work to heal your body so that you can get to living your purpose and enjoy life, it's gonna get bumpy sometimes. Be tough. You are mentally tougher than you think. Do not question your ability to get through and handle any situation inside of you or out. Push yourself to deal with and complete anything and everything that comes up or that you are meant to experience in your environment. You are not going to die is what we kept telling each other when we were being pushed to limits. Your soul would not allow you in any situation unless it knew you were ready to be there. And I believe it will only attempt to teach you certain lessons if and when it has enough support and pull from the universe around you to have your back and keep you safe. Your soul is not working alone. It's working collectively with the whole. This will all make sense to you later when you realize that your soul is the one. You will begin to understand why each obstacle was put in your path and you will comprehend why it was put there and when it was put there. The further you go, on your journey. The hard times will dissipate and bliss will begin to take its place with each successful completion of this two shall pass moments. Those moments stay on the road behind you where you leave them and you begin to get lighter and brighter and more contented with the universe as you go. And yes, you will have to repeat any and all lessons that you weasel or maneuver or back down from out of fear. Lose fear. You have universal guidance and fear is unnecessary. It's a completely wasteful emotion that you're only clinging to because you haven't figured out what lies ahead. 
Just keep going and fear disappears completely. You completely forget how to feel that emotion eventually. It becomes replaced with two other different emotions. They are excitement and satisfaction. You are becoming more complete. High five. Here are some helpful techniques and technology to ease and promote cleansing. Use crystals and don't forget to cleanse and charge them as well. I am all about sound tech like they have used throughout the course of history. These by binaural beats, isochronic tones, tribal beats and reiki music, maybe even subliminal messages to get specific thought processes going like positive thoughts and self-love. All of these are available on free music apps. Salt baths are so refreshing and aromatherapy is excellent. I limit products on my skin and I do not put chloride or into my system in toothpaste or tap water. I try to keep my third eye decalcified. Yoga is where it's at for people who are not in an environment where they have a lot of room or outside space to work out because yoga is my favorite way to meditate and great for my body at the same time. This is just a short list. The absolute most effective clarifying activity is quiet time in nature. Chapter seven. I think this is the final chapter. Be selfish with your time. You need it. You need your time to progressively ascend. Do not share your valuable time with people who are stalling you or blocking your path. I am not going to say that it's not possible to reach enlightenment among others who are living the old way, but don't spend any more time than you have to with energy vampires who are also on the same path as you, but are being stubborn and bullheaded. They're too lazy to do the work they need to yet, and this is why they need to cling to you. When they can bring a good feeling inside of you down is when they have good feelings of their own. I do believe that some of us were meant to really be pushed in this area to help them grow so they could progress themselves. And it makes us tougher going through all of this when we learn how to block them and not give them power. But it can be very distracting if we choose to spend a lot of time with them and it can stop us from learning. And in some cases it can lead people to give up entirely, which is sad because they will continue to live in misery. At times it is their very own actions that are pushing us to purge aspects that we might otherwise avoid, but stay safe. Evolution is a roller coaster for everyone, and some people may be too far behind to understand the emotions necessary along the process, and they may resort to violence and mental abuse to protect their confused integrity. You've made it this far, and you are cleansing and purging, and you have needs that you cannot under any circumstances leave undone. You must keep your chakras balanced. Meditate and stay grounded. These are not optional. You will regress without staying as shiny as possible and you'll have to go through unnecessary lessons over unless you remain grounded and balanced. You and your environment. At a certain point, you'll figure this out on your own. I have no doubts about that, but just keep it in mind if you don't know it yet. And I was wrong because <laughs> there's chapter eight here. A little short one. Live the life you deserve. To be honest with you, this will come naturally to each and every one of you as you connect the soul within you to itself and it begins communicating better with the universe. Your ideal life will fall right into your hands because you'll be paying attention and know what your next move should be. And let's say that you knew what was right but chose differently. Well, then you would just learn from it as many times as it takes until you can get past it and move a little closer to the life you deserve. There is not even one lesson you can duck away from or get out of learning, so keep that in mind and don't waste your time. 
we begin to think differently throughout this process and begin to love ourselves more with each step we take. So I do believe that you are going to demand the life you deserve because you will have earned it the hard way and you will feel worthy of the good life. Whatever your purpose may be for you, enjoy it. Live and love. And this chapter nine. <laughs> okay. Love instead. Through knowing and understanding, this too will be a given and is not something that anyone but your very own piece of the one, your soul, can show or teach you. This one comes from the inside out. You begin to receive love everywhere you go and your body begins to share it more and more. True, divine, unalterated love. Unadulterated. Hmm. Unadulterated. I don't know how you'd say that. It says unadulterated. <laughs> love. Okay. Love is natural. At the beginning of taking on this type of inner work, people irritate you and you loathe your circumstances and hate your environment at times. But move along. And be patient because these feelings fade out of you once you start knowing the reason why the world and the people in it are the way they are. We understand and are empathetic with the entirety of the world. And you cannot force or learn this behavior in any way. It will present itself to you only when the time is right. Love is a beautiful thing and it's been hiding inside all of us this whole time. That is why your soul helped you figure out that you were ready to begin your journey in the first place. It, your soul, one, wants you to free it from hiding inside anymore. Four, it was not hiding when you were born. Only after being exposed to this world did it need to protect itself in you. But now it is ready for you to be you again. I'm very thankful to the guides and our spirit teams who have helped us get this far. I am very grateful to the collective consciousness and for all of your own inner work and love. And I'm very blessed to have found and freed the love inside. So it may shine as one. And so it is. Namaste. Melinda de Clevenger. Online, I'm MJ. EM3DJ3 at gmail.com for a personalized tarot card reading. And PayPal, EM3DJ3. Like, subscribe, hit the alarm bell. Check out all my other cool stuff I do too. I love ya. Thanks for listening. I hope this helps you so much. Like it helped me. I wanted to share this with you because I love you. Namaste.